Back with the drill for the week. Y'all know we love good shooting drills. Obviously, important part of what we do, important part of our offense, important part of our overall blueprint. So uh, another one that thanks to Jose Fernandez to share from South Florida uh, for sharing with us. Uh, he ran a variety of this. We took it, tweaked it, kind of made it our own a little bit. Um, you know, there's always three things we're looking for in a shooting drill. And I use these basketballs, kind of like instead of stars. This is a fives basketball, a five star game spot, game shots drill. Only probably a three spot or a three star, three ball speed drill. We don't have a defense out there. Uh, you know, we're not keeping score competitively uh, versus an opponent. So I, I have a problem giving this the full five for speed. But you can make sure it's at least a three. You don't want it to drop below to where it's the, it becomes lazy, to where they're focusing too much uh, on, on making the shot and not going at, at, at almost full game speed. But really good drill for it. A um, couple things you can do as well. You can make this a competitive drill. Some drills, it's a conditioning drill. It's a timing drill. It's other things. But you can turn this into a competitive drill very easily. Three ways that we do it. We just chart how many shots we make as a full team. I think on this day, we make 88. And if I'm not mistaken, we were probably shooting against South Florida that week. Uh, one thing that we will do is get on the phones to, to, to friends of ours, to colleagues, to peers, and say, hey, we're gonna, we use it with the University of Kentucky, even in our own league. Uh, I'll call Coach LZ and say, hey, we're gonna do this drill this week. Y'all do it too, and see what y'all get, and let's compare. I think on this particular day that we're videoing, I think we had 12 people, so we were going 3v3v3. Three three three. Each team had a score on the sideline, charting how many shots went in. Locks and Dragons, again, hopefully you followed us uh, on, on previous YouTube channels. If not, go back and check out our language. Locks and Dragons are just two positions that we have on the floor. The two locks occur in the corners. We have a lock on each side. And then the Dragon, we have two spots at the top and then the spot at the very top. So the Dragon is always the last person to cross half court for us. And um, it's, um, if to put in your terms or maybe more uh, terms that we all share, a four player, a stretch four, a power forward, a small forward, maybe something like that is the players that we have here. So it starts out with three balls on one end, three balls on the other with three passers ready to go. The shooters are in the middle. Um, one, at, one at the half court line and two wide getting ready to run their lock spots. Whenever the time starts, uh, the first, the locks will start by running to their spots. These two passers at the elbows will be responsible for throwing it to the lock players on target on time. The player standing at the free throw line, at the nail, whatever you happen to call it in your team, in your language, they make the last pass to the dragon as they're filling into the top spot here. I spoke a minute ago about the middle passer. After these two make their passes first, the two people at the elbows will be timing their passes and will be the first passes. The last pass will be coming to the dragon. The middle passer, the player standing on the nail, our dragon is responsible for starting the next round. We don't want these two players leaving early. We want them waiting on her first move and her first move triggers them to sprint. And then she's just in a casual jog because she's supposed to be the last one across the half court. So we get three shots on each end. Three, three, three. We're going to always be going in multiples of three. I do believe on this day we happen to get 88 in three minutes, which is a pretty good, a pretty good total. Uh, you can't have very many trips of zero. You got to have ones, twos, and threes. And if we had audio on here, you'd be hearing coaches and players echoing in practice what we were making on the ones, twos, and threes. So we'll get it started with the first. You know, you see Mac already halfway into her cut, and Amber getting ready to go. Sasha's timing her cut. So our first trip. Let's see what we get. I'll stop it and score. We got good timing, good pass, and we get one, two, three. That is a great start. Okay, that's three of our better shooters. As a coach, don't set this up. Don't, at the first time you do this, just get it set up, get it going, but don't be strategic about it. Let your team, over time, figure that if you're competing, like I think this day we were competing against South Florida, <clears throat> and we had to have a good number, well, Guess what? They picked our top three average three-point shooters during the season <clears throat> to shoot these first three shots, which I thought was really smart. Let them figure that out. So we've got three here. Let's see what this group does. Again, one, zero. That's a zero. So that's, you know, you got people hopefully in the background picking each other up. They're going to rebound. They're getting the next players in. 
This, these shooters just become the passers and we rotate it on this line. We got good spacing here. We got kids running. It is energetic. It is a good conditioner. It gets you going. It's a good place, a good drill to put in early in practice to make sure you're sharp. But likewise, you can use it at the end of practice. If you're trying to condition a little bit, shoot it while you're tired. So right now we're sitting on a three, another zero. One thing you can do as a coach, and I think that's what Coach Goldwire is here is doing, sometimes it's just bad luck. You know, you might shoot a shot that looks like it's going in and here comes somebody's ball and knocks one out. Count it, you know. Again, depending on what type of mood you're in. If you're in a bad mood, don't count it. Tell them that they should have had better timing. But if your team needs a little pick-me-up that day and you need to get a little bit of something going, um, you know, say to them, hey, say we're going to count that one. All right? So let's see. We've got Z. We've got, so far we're working on a three. We must get really hot here in a second. Good. That's the same group, if you notice. That's Sasha, Amber, and Mac again. So if we were scoring at 3v3, that group's setting at six already. So far else, nobody's even made one, I don't think, depending on how we've scored it. So depending on how you're scoring at 3v3, we are at nine. Oh, back-to-back -back three. So we're at 12. Good timing, good passing. Probably started her cut a little bit early. She should have waited a little bit longer. No problem there. Led to a one. We're at 13, 14, 15, 15, 16, 17, nope, 16. Probably counted one of those. Probably didn't count that one because it didn't have a chance. We're going to get real hot. I guess we go for four minutes because we're at three already. Four minutes, sorry. I told you three minutes a minute ago I meant four. Another three there. Probably tell her to wait. She started a little bit too early. Hopefully a coach has picked that out. I bet somebody has. We want her waiting a little bit, a little bit longer so that we've got more game-like finishes. <clears throat> Good, there's a two. A common thing you'll hear us saying in practice, twos lead to threes. So get zeros lead to ones, ones lead to twos, Twos lead to threes on your trips. So if you've got a group that's struggling, maybe they haven't got it, you've got a couple of zeros in a row, say, hey, somebody get us a one. Don't go from necessarily from zero to three. Get your group to get a one. That'll lead you to two. That'll lead you to threes. Then you'll start getting a few, a few back-to-backs. There was a two. You could set a set number of times you have to have threes, a set number of times that you can't have zeros. You can take this actual setup and score a number of different ways without having to change uh, the drill, without having to change the passing. Just change how it's scored, just change how you make it competitive. So we're about two minutes through here. I've lost track of what the score is. Go through yourself, watch the end of this video. Set a standard, uh, keep a board. Uh, Coach Todd is really good about on his practice schedule. Hey, the last time we did uh, locks and dragons, we only got 64. Let's try to beat that number before we do anything else. I do know for a fact, we probably wouldn't have put this video on here unless we get incredibly hot. I think we got 88 that day. So 88 is a really, really good score. Use it with your team, go four minutes, three passers, six balls, three passers on each end with three balls, one group in the middle. If you beat 88, give me a call, we'll shoot against y'all.